Good morning. My name is Kevin Mobley, CEO of the Ann Thomas Group. Uh, my bio, I, am, uh, I have an undergrad degree from George Mason University in System Engineering. I have a master's degree from Georgia Tech in uh, Systems Engineering as well. Um, I have a black belt in Six Sigma. Um, I've also uh, had a chance to go up to Dartmouth to uh, a couple of their entrepreneur programs. Um, that has been phenomenal for us, for, for the company and myself as a well. You know, it was a, it was an interesting time. Um, I, I had in, in college, I had lost weight a couple times in college. I had uh, lost 100 pounds um, at the beginning when I pledged, and, and then again um, when I took up bike riding, probably my you know towards the end of my college career, and had lost a lot of weight and, and, and done well. And then when I came on to grad school and, and regained some weight in grad school, and then went into corporate America, and um, was definitely larger than I was in college, but I hadn't ballooned. A friend of mine. Uh, had an office right across from me. She would, she remembered the fact that my eyes were literally sunken in. I looked like I was like almost like a dead man walking. Blood pressure was through the roof, sleep apnea, um, you know, all the things. It was just, uh, it, it, I was literally gonna kill myself. Well, and I've been large. I mean, I've been large literally all my life. I mean, I was, I was a big kid in, in kindergarten. Um, so here I was. I am six three, and so um, you know, at that point, I was carrying the weight. Um, and I had, like I said, I'd done a century, and I still was, uh, you know, still was cycling. I was doing a lot of spin classes and things like that. So I mean, but you know, and I remember going to spin class, and I would literally, the seat would literally crunch down by the end of the class because the, uh, you know, the thing that tightens the seat up couldn't hold my weight. Um, so I was, I was still being physically active. It wasn't that I was completely inactive, uh, but the stress was just unreal, and I had the sleep apnea and, and not dealing with the sleep apnea for probably about a year. Uh, when, it took, when I took the sleep test, I was uh, literally uh, stopped breathing 55 times an hour. So 55 times an hour. Really you. So that's what that's what that's what's going on. You stop breathing, and then you literally start snoring, or you do something that really forces yourself to wake up. So you start breathing again. Because I'm I'm an expert in what I do. I've been doing it a long time. Um, I, you know, I could I could I could do my work in my sleep. The, the, the challenges was the fact that you know the ability to make an impact though was, was limited because of the environment and we were working for really high profile customers I mean, we're not working we're talking major top five banks we're talking you know critical projects uh, we're talking a lot of them, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars at risk so we're talking you know really critical stuff and and so there was you know the stress of trying to manage through that and believing this hero syndrome that you could always push through it. If I just work another hour, if I just stay up another hour, you know, if I just work through one more Saturday, one more Sunday, you know, there's one of the guys on the team used to joke around that when Friday would come around and say, okay, great, only two more days to Monday, I mean, two more work days to Monday. I mean, there was no weekends, there was no time off, it was just, you know, you just, just grind and work, you know, because you want to do your best, you want to bring the best to the table, you don't get in the game just to be average, to be mediocre, to just kind of get along to go along, you know, there's a personality that's very suited to that environment that's a personality is not, and mine was definitely not. I, I, I had built, even when I was in corporate America, I was what they call an entrepreneur, I had built practices inside of these companies that ran really as their own business. It's not 100% about the career, you know, in other words, the career and the, and the other pieces have to come together, um, and, and unfortunately, you know, I let my career be the only thing in my life at that point. You know, all decisions were made strictly around that. Everything, the health, um, you know, my, my sort of mental faculties, everything else was sort of put on the side. And it begins to bleed into the work. Because as, as, as good as you are at what you do in terms of the actual career itself, you know, managing the team starts to fall down, right? Because these are people you manage, right? And they see the craziness. They, they're, they're recognizing that this is not right. And if you're not being a human and saying, well, looking at it, you know, in a much more holistic way, of what's going on with your own mind? You tend to dismiss what's happening in their mind, what's happening in their world, what's happening in their with their body. You, know, you can see people, you know, their own health going deteriorating because they're they're really working these crazy hours and they're, and they're not getting any better. And, and so, um, because you're dismissing in your own life, you're not necessarily paying attention to other people and what's happening in theirs. I born and left corporate America in, in, in 2007, um, and that alone dropped 25 pounds. Uh, then I went over to Ghana. I was pursuing some opportunities there, and uh, on the second trip over, I contracted malaria when I came home. This was all great for now, but how was I going to live the rest of my life? Because it's one thing to say, "Hey, I'm going to do this, you know, low carb program, 
you know, now, but, you know, I still like cake, I still like pie, I still like, you know, sweets, um, you know, I, I was going to for the rest of my life, and so that's when I began to do a tremendous amount of research, and so I probably for the next four months kind of just became completely obsessed over everything I could read. I didn't care about a diet in terms of, a, here's a regimen, go follow it, it's going work for me. Some people, that's what they want, that's what they want, I really began really to understand the science. As I understood the science, then I began to say, okay, this is how the body works, I ran a lot of animals, going experiments on myself. And as I started to see how I could do certain things and see the results of myself, then I realized that this is how my body works. It does what I want. I want the way science works. And in, in every situation, from, from making a choice and finally understanding, like if I was doing my from a health standpoint, if I did now what I did, if I had done this in high school, my life would be dramatically different. Yeah, I mean, I, I will tell you, you, the longer you put it off, the more frustrated you get. And, and so if you're going to take a risk, take it right now. Don't wait another day, another second. Um, it, but I promise you, the longer you wait, the more frustrated and the more it's going to manifest itself. In a lot of ways, I, I, I looked at my life and said, you know, it's kind of like God closing the walls. You know, so I kept finding new ways to try to escape. And I kept finding a new job and trying to find a new way of pursuing myself. But at the end of the day, it was just those walls closing in. So eventually I had to make a decision.